Where is the church, we ask, and where is God? And today I want to look at actions. This week I wanted to share some of the things I learned when I was staying in the West Bank and how God spoke to me through the lives of some of the people I met. We'll start by, I'll ask you and to read from the Beatitudes, because these are words of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. One of the messages that many of the speakers emphasised was the beatitude, but not the passive, not being passive, but requiring action. They emphasise peacemakers. To be a maker is an action word. And then if you think about hungering and thirsting, this is an activity. Have you ever been really thirsty? Until you are satisfied, you are unable to think of anything much else but the fact that you want to drink. And what energy you have, you put towards trying to obtain a drink. That's the sort of energy we need to be active peacemakers. And then I'll ask Jesus to read one of the warnings that Jesus gave about not being active from Matthew's Gospel. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was ill and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Another action message. People who actually did something. We see on the media what's happening in Gaza. People who are hungry, sick and in prison for being Palestinians. What is the Western Church doing? I want to tell you about the Reverend Mutha Isaac. He's a very talented and well-qualified person. He has been offered many posts in other countries. I know Canada offered him a job, accommodation and a car. And he turned it down because he's concerned about the Palestinians and the witness in Bethlehem. He's now the pastor of an evangelical Lutheran church in Bethlehem. He's also the academic dean of, dean of the Bible College. And Luther is passionate about issues relating to Palestinian theology. It actually annoys him the way many Western Christians regard Palestinians as though they were Canaanites from the Old Testament and don't acknowledge that Christian Pal Palestinians exist. I want you to listen to this very challenging and small interview. Um, it's just a very small part of an interview. Uh, that shows his passion and his concern. History will hold them accountable. This is not. This is the time to act. This is the time to speak. History will hold you accountable, and history will ask, "Where were you when uh, this was happening in Gaza? Um, when children were killed 
uh, on such an unprecedented level that we've seen in recent history? Where were you? And if the answer is, we were praying for peace, uh, this is the kind of uh, soft spirituality that I've been challenging and many of us have been challenging because it gives the cover that we're peaceful, we're good people. We pray for both sides equally. And I think true peacemaking uh, demands that we take sides, uh, demands that we speak truth uh, to power and call things by their name. Uh, this is the time to act and to speak and to put pressure. And this is the time to uh, act by our moral and ethical standards as, as Christians who are demanded to speak justice, to defend the oppressed, um, and to be thirsty even. You know, Jesus said, blessed are those who are thirsty, hungry for, uh, for righteousness. Right now, the situation in Gaza is beyond horrible. It's, it's, it's literally hell on earth. And I think as many people will continue to ask, where was God? Me as a pastor, I will continue to ask, where was the church? Luther is actually a very gentle, caring person. He was so aware when he was speaking to us at the conference that taking place 40 miles away, innocent people were suffering and being killed. And I ask, are we, the Western Church, too inward-looking? Is having prayer meetings for peace enough? Should prayer lead to action? I've tried to be a pacifist most of my life, and I have met with lovely people. And we meet sometimes in peaceful retreats and we pray and we have good fellowship, usually good food. Yet is this what Je Jesus was really speaking about? I strongly believe it is not enough. It is an important start, but we cannot stop there. Just giving us a nice experience, feeling that we're good people because we pray and we think of others. I've been told that we can only work in a limited area where God's place us, placed us. Yes, it's, a good, it's good being a peacemaker um, in our area and seeking justice in our area, and that's necessary. Encouraging tolerance and understanding between different groups. But can we do more? We can be open to have a wider effect and ask God for guidance. I think of people like Rosie Parks, whose action was not to give up her seat to a white man. And that started the boycott of the buses and kicked off a kickstart to the civil rights movement. Just one older person, and yet God used her. So I believe that God can use us here, even in broad stairs. We also ask the question, where is God? How can he be God of love and justice if he allows innocent people to suffer? The book of Hebrews was written to encourage Christians who were in danger of being crucified and being burnt alive to light up Nero's grounds. It does not say that suffering will not happen if they are Christians, but reminds them to be faithful and to hold on to the truth. It reminds them that Jesus was crucified. You and I'll read a small part from Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. To remember God's angels surround us. They're there to protect us. We have the promise of our Easter message and can sing, Made like him, like him we rise. Alleluia. 
I want to finish with a short extract from Muther's Easter sermon this year. It amazes me that he can preach like this in Bethlehem. So he gives, he doesn't give a whole answer, but he gives some of the answer and a pointer to why we have to suffer. And he gives us a challenge. Where is God? He is with us as we suffer. And he calls us to be fellow workers. Never in my life have I been prouder and more honored to be a Palestinian more than the last 175 days. Proud of our resilience, our sumut. I'm proud of our solidarity with one another, our unity. And when I say we will be okay and that we will recover, I say it because I know my people. I know who we are. Palestine is our homeland. We are deeply rooted here. And even for those Palestinians exiled around the world, Palestine lives in them. Palestine today is in every corner of this earth. So we will never relinquish our God-given rights of living in dignity and justice. Yet I also say we will recover because I believe in a good and a just God who rules the world with justice. Probably our biggest asset is the justice of our cause. This is our biggest asset as Palestinians. Our sumud, our steadfastness is anchored in our just cause and in our historical rootedness in this land, but it's also anchored in the just nature of God. And so because Jesus lives, we can face all things, stare the empire in the face and defeat it. So today let the way of the cross be our way. Let the way of the sacrificial love be our way. The crucified Christ who sacrificed his love for the sake of those he loved calls us for costly solidarity, the costly solidarity of love. This is a call to action for the church to be the church, to be Jesus' church, to follow in the footsteps of a crucified Savior. The cross is God's solidarity with humanity in its pain and suffering. And God's solidarity must become our solidarity. The followers of Jesus risk all to speak truth. This is not about making statements. Jesus did not say, I was hungry and you prayed for me and made a statement. No. Jesus said, I was a prisoner and you came to me. This is about action. We must find ways to make a difference. We must act, mobilize, pressure, lobby, hold powers and leaders accountable. And as people of the resurrection, we must unsettle the empire. Today, the land of the resurrection calls you to act in hope and love. Today, the land of the resurrection called you to unsettle the empire. Together, we are committed to end this genocide. Together, we are committed to work for truth and justice. We know we will prevail because Al Masih come, Christ is risen. Amen. Are you there?